Well, welcome to my party. This is episode one of Pajama Party Profits. And today we're going to be talking to Eleanor Pryor. She is um, she's the person that I'm hoping to turn into the sidekick and be a regular on this show. She just is now listening to that and finding that out. So I don't know what, she, what she's thinking. I'm trying to see if her face says. You're, gonna, uh, you're also getting visited by uh, my little friend here, Hamster. He's been with me through the internet marketing world about halfway through it. Say hello, everyone. And um, let's just start the show. Or not. We'll try to start the show. I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. That was like the roughest thing ever, but that's okay because you guys don't even know what the whole situation was. We've got Eleanor on hold right now. She's in our little green room and she's watching, but we had set this up probably a few weeks in advance, had to do some rescheduling and that kind of thing. And yes, of course, you're going to interrupt like a little toddler and that's cool because that's why I brought you with. But um, we, I had internet problems, like major internet problems. I'd worked and you can see bags under my eyes and that's okay because it's authentic, right? Um, and that's what happens at pajama parties. You just don't sleep. But I have to go to sleep because that's what we're here about. We're here about making money while you're sleeping. So I want to sleep more often. Uh, today, we're just going to talk a little bit about how we got started uh, in, in the internet world. Um, both Eleanor and I are full-time IMers. Uh, that does not mean that I only work online. I do have some clientele and I do things like that. And eventually, those will get fewer and fewer and we'll be making more money as we wake up. I have a, a fun little app on my phone. I don't have it with me right now, but uh, sometime in the future, I'll have my phone on and you'll be able to actually listen as I make uh, money because you'll hear it go cha-ching, cha-ching as money gets dumped into my PayPal account. And so I'm really excited to share that with you. That's from uh, two of my other mentors that I hope to have on the show. They they showed me how to get that done. So uh, right now, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our awesome guest, Eleanor. She's uh, she's just she's a perfect first guest for our show because she's just so much fun. And when I first met Eleanor, I've, I've mentioned this before, but it's so funny because I found her through the internet and she had no idea I was stalking her. Um, I, 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 and I guess that's, that's what we say about people that, that we're following on the internet and they don't know it, right? We're stalking them. So I, uh, I was looking for a promo for a website. I think I was looking for a bonus for something that Jason Flatland had done and she had done her little hangout. So I knew she knew what she was doing because hangouts are what ranked and, and those kind of things. So, and don't worry if you don't understand any of that, because those are all things that we'll be talking about during the duration of our show. Uh, if not this one, we'll cover it in the next one. But Eleanor had done this really awesome hangout about, about one of Jason's products. And later on, I saw her at an event that we'll be talking about. Actually, we should remember, remind me, Eleanor, we're going to talk about E1K. And uh, when we went to the E1K event, I walked up to her and I said, hey, I love your blog. You do some great stuff. And she looked at me and I'll never forget it. And she's, I think she's really laughing right now because when, when I said that, uh, I won't let it down. I, I know this is probably the fourth time I've told people about this, but I, I just thought it was just just so awesome because she was just so modest. And she looked at me and she said, are you sure you have the right blog? And she started to describe, it's got the girl with the curly hair on it. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's your blog. So she had no idea, you know, that that uh, she'd been found by someone like me. She thought, so you never know who's watching and uh, you never know who it, you're going to work with in the future. So just make sure that you're authentic in everything you do. So welcome, Eleanor. Now you can yell at me. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and let's see. Turn your mic on, would you? See if you can turn your mic on. You I'm giggling. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. 
<laughs> oh, you threw me under the bus already. See how you are. <laughs> Well, it just shows how modest we can be, right? You know, we just, you just don't know. And I, I have that happen to me a lot, um, especially because I have a, a local list. And so if I go to a networking event and something and they'll be like, you know, I really enjoy your emails. And I'm like, that is so great. Where's your name tag? Because I don't know how to address who you are. So the, the more, you know, people get to know you, the, the more fun it can be, right? It wasn't always like that, though, was it? I I don't know this this story. Uh, we didn't really do uh, any kind of rehearsal for the show or anything like that. But I did say, you know, we're going to talk about how we got started. I know I have a story, and I am sure you do too. So why don't you? How long have you been doing this? Um, first, I must apologize. I have a toddler, and her name is Halo. She is a mixed bully and lab and for some reason right now she if you hear her I'm sorry she's decided to go chase something <laughs> or or someone yes, um, you apologize because we can't see her because uh, <laughs> look at this one this one's like would you please shut up it's it's my nap time and you're talking too loud <laughs> um but in answer to your question I got started at the end of 2008 okay that is like the worst interview ever Eleanor Come on, better than that. Yeah. You watched Johnny Carson. I know you have. <laughs> yes. So the reason I got started at the end of 2008, I will elaborate since you just pointed that out to me, um, was I used to, my dad used to have a masonry business and he ruined me for having a real job anywhere. I cannot go and punch somebody's clock. You want to kill me, you want to put me in an early grave, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. I feel like I would be caged. So when I worked for him, I got a 40 hour a week paycheck and I maybe worked 10 to 15 hours a week. I would take my girls with me and, or, or pretty much all my kids at that point in time. And I go work in my own bedroom and just do payroll and do accounts receivables and billables. And then if I had to go run and pick up checks and stuff like that, maybe once a month, that's what I did. But I never had to put my kids in daycare, um, and that's kind of the beauty of it. And Grandma took care of them while I was doing, you know, the work that was supposed to be done. So I got a 40-hour paycheck for, <laughs> for 10 to 15 hours a week worth of work. Yeah, yeah you know, that's, um, that's something that is you, – you kind of, like, already – I think you just talked a whole bunch of people into working for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you no, can't that's, work for that's, him. no, no, that's, that, that's what we, we want, right? Especially parents, especially moms. We're always looking for something to do to work from home. We want to contribute to the, the pile, but we don't always know how to go about doing that. And you named all the things. You've got flexibility. You can work with your kids. Uh, you're making more money than when you go in. You know, I, I, I punched a clock. I, I get stupid every once in a while and I'll apply for a job and I still don't know. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's like all the time I'm putting into just even like writing an application out or, um, or going on the interview or is all time that I could be spending, you know, writing another book or developing another program or uh, doing my own SEO. So it's, it's really funny how, how that goes. And, and I've seen a lot of people say, I know one gal said in particular, um, in a group that I'm in, she said that she had a business coach that's that made her promise that when her bank account got to a certain level, she would go get a job. That was 15 years ago. And now she's ready to try to work on her own again. And I just think like my heart breaks because why did that happen? How, how did she let her go for 15 years working for somebody else? I wouldn't survive. I know I wouldn't. So what, what happened? Like, why did you stop working for dad? And how did you end up doing things like affiliate marketing? One sec. I dropped something. Oh. <laughs> All right. um, well, my parents had me late in life. So at the end of two, around in 2008, um, he was putting more money into the business than the business was making because of the economy in here in Las Vegas, all the, and being a mom and pop business kind of threw that off. So, um, I told him to go ahead and retire. I had plenty of years under my belt to get my unemployment. And then my husband at the time was, we had 
Dallas 2008. What year is it? Oh, Dallas was three. So, and then the other kids were, Dallas was three. The other kids were all junior high and elementary school and under. So for the amount of kids, blended family at the time of five kids, including ours, there was no way we could afford for me to go get a job, pay for daycare, worry about who's picking who up, and, and all that stuff. It just wasn't feasible. So he told me to find a way to work from home, and it had better not be direct sales or multi-level marketing. <laughs> and so one day I was in the grocery store, and there was I, it was either house good housekeeping or just one of those you know, magazines and on the front cover of it, it said something about a new position uh, that women were doing because it, it was a way for them to work from home and it's called virtual assistant. So I went home and I started Googling virtual assistant and I came across um, VA classroom.com. So I knew I had all the administrative skills to be a VA. Um, I just hate bookkeeping and I hate, filing and data entry and all that other stuff. And I, um, when I was doing direct sales, I met this woman named Ann. And Ann um, was really, really smart. And so one day I went to her house because she was building this website. And she was telling me, yeah, my husband hates when I sell beauty control. And he's really annoyed with me about building this website. He would rather me try and sell one of these doors because every time I sell one of these doors, I make like, bank and I'm like what door and what are you talking about she goes, so she explained affiliate marketing to me she was selling doors via affiliate marketing yet she was building a website that was going to be a directory for direct sales consultants so she blew my mind but then I got distracted because you know mom blended family at that point in time and um, all that other good stuff that I was trying to juggle Okay, but so, were you doing affiliate marketing then when you met her? No, I, mean, I had not I mean, even VA, started. VA stuff? No, no, that was way before I even, even okay. came across that. So what happened was when I found VA Classroom, they were teaching a course for an internet marketing virtual assistant. And so remember I said I hated bookkeeping and payroll and all that other stuff. So I was like, ooh, this is interesting. I could totally do this. So I took that course. And I also had been looking um, for something about affiliate marketing, and God, I can't remember. I wouldn't recommend this place to anybody anyway, so it's a good thing I can't remember the name of the place that I took the this um, affiliate marketing course from because it was just a mess. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but in the internet marketing virtual assistant course that I took with Craig Cannings at VAClassroom.com, it got me totally intrigued back into the affiliate marketing. It woke me back up. And then, of course, it started my love for WordPress, which I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong with WordPress. And then that's how I um, some, I connected with Kim Doyle because that was at that time when people were doing webinars and you know Facebook pages were really good and, and, and interactable, nice, still, you know, they were still virgin, I guess you could say. Um, so that's how I got started. And then Craig came out with a second course called um, the Social Media Marketing Virtual Assistant. So I pretty got, much got my education for like the skill sets that I have from BA Classroom. So Let's talk about for just a sec, okay? Because I'm, I'm going to interrupt you because uh, I get it now. We're kind of following the path of of how you landed and where you went, but. Uh, that brings up a really good point as, as a parent. I want to know what you think. And I, I posted this in a group and I was really amazed. I don't know why I was amazed because I didn't know what I was going to have, but I was amazed at the responses. So my son uh, is 15 and he is considered gifted and talented. He's been labeled and uh, he actually studies at home because there's no way I can put him in a public school. He wants to try it next year, but I, it's like in crazy, but for high school, I wanted him to work from home. So he came to me one day and he was really excited. And he said, I finally know what I want to do for a living. And I said, okay, what? And he said, I want to live stream Minecraft and make money that way. Now, before I tell you 
what my response was. What would you do? Like, seriously, what would you do? What would you say? Let him try it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was all for it. I was like, rock on, man. What do you need? Let's get this thing going. And it's funny because we now we both are like saving up together. We're talking about like splitting a, a computer so that I can use more of the stuff that I want to use. But uh, I was I, I was all for it, too. And I posted it. One of the first responses I got was, well, my son paid his way through college from from live streaming Minecraft, <laughs> he said. And so my next question was, would you think that his college was really worth Now, don't write in and tell me and leave a bunch of crappy comments <laughs> or anything about this, because this is everyone's opinion is their own personal opinion. And I'm sorry, Mr. President Obama, I think our opinions are going to be different. And that is, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking politics. I'm just talking directly about what's going on and, and the way people go. I'm just going to say it. I'm not even going to ask the question. I think that everything you just described, you said you took training online. That's training that you're not going to get through your college. And if you do, it's going to be really fargan dated. So my suggestion to the kids are, you know, depending on what they want to do. One of my kids wants to be a teacher. You can't go. You, you have to have credentials to be a teacher you know, in the public school system. So, you know, that she gets a pass, but everyone else so far, it's like, you want, if you go learn how to do what you want to do and make money doing it, I don't really, I have a master's degree and I don't think it's helped my business uh, much at all. I, are you kind of in line with that? Or do you have something to add or? Yes, I'm sorry. I have to pull her in here because she is making me insane barking. I got to get her a treat. Um, oh. But I remember one before I go get her a treat. I remember one thing Craig used to say to me because I was, I mean, I pretty much have almost every course that he put out. And he asked me, he goes, well, what does your husband think about the money that you're spending on these courses? And I'm like, um, <laughs> I don't know what he thinks. It's not, you know, this is my education. So, and it wasn't me taking money from him because I was still getting um, my unemployment. So I was doing that and also making affiliate commissions at that time. So I was, because I was promoting VA classroom at that time had an affiliate program. And so I was promoting his pro programs and making the money to buy my other courses. Um, so you were kind of like, you're using your, um, yeah, I love that. You're basically getting stuff for free. A lot of right. times, the commissions on, on, on something like that is 50%. So if you sell two, you've you've uh, paid for it yourself. And if you sell three, you've made money to, to learn. Yeah. Okay. You talk for a second. Let me get her a treat and get yeah. her in. <laughs> All right. You're excused. <laughs> All right. And I realize I don't think I even told you who I am. Um, I'm Brenda Trot, and I am uh, called locally. I'm called the Make Money in Your Sleep Girl. And um, real briefly, you'll my my story will unfold as we go. But basically, yeah. what happened was I'm going to mute her little mic there. Let's see. Um, what happened with um, my program it, it, or in my situation is I was teaching, I've taught every level in the, uh, in the uh, school system from pre-K all the way through to college. I taught teachers things and that kind of thing. But one year um, in 2011, in the middle of the year, I became very, very ill. And, you know, the nature of that illness might be unveiled down the road too, depending on if it's worthwhile. But what I finally, uh, what I ended up doing for a while was, and it was hard for me. It was hard for me to get out of bed every day. It was, it was just plain hard. So um, I ended up, I had stacks and stacks of books in my garage. Many of them were brand new. They, you know, book of the month club for teachers and you never get to it yet. And so I listed those on Amazon and every day I would get a new order from Amazon and I would stuff the book into an envelope and I would print off a label from Amazon and I would send it off on its way. And the feeling that I got from doing that um, really b beyond the money, beyond the fact that that money was keeping my lights on, the feeling that I got from that was 
uh, so cool because I knew I didn't know if I was ever going to teach again, but I knew that that book that I sent off to another teacher was going to get used. And it was so just invigorating to me to know that my stuff was going to get used. Well, eventually I ran out of books, <laughs> like every single book that I had uh, sold. So I started looking for different ways to to find things. I bought movies and, but there, there really is uh, what Eleanor was talking about. There's a certain skill set in finding the right types of products so that when you invest, your risk isn't so high. Cause sometimes it's like a gamble to, to find things that you want to resell. And uh, I, I still do that as part of my uh, income system. But when I was on Amazon, um, combined, combined with Amazon and combined with a book that I read called, um, I can do anything I want if I only knew what it was. It was like this book fell on me and, and it might as well have been written for Brenda Trott, right? Because I had no idea. I had, I had been a teacher all my life, pre-K, um, you know, even babies, college, everything. If I couldn't teach anymore, holy cow, um, what was going to happen? And there's a whole story behind that too, that we'll probably do in another session. This is pillow talk because we're, you know, we're having girl, girl time talk about how we got started and in the future we'll do ghost stories and we'll do, you know, a little bit of spiritual kind of stuff there. But uh, for this episode, I'm just going to try to give you the bare minimum. So that's how through that book, I realized my passion when I was younger was to write and so I started to, to write books and, uh, you know, 27 plus, I don't know, I might be at 30 titles plus now, uh, though that income helps pay my mortgage. Um, I've co-authored with some people and that income for them has always been uh, helpful. One of my authors has an illness that I don't know if she wants me to describe it or not, but, uh, she's always very thankful that she's getting that check in the mail every day for something that we did. Um, really, you know, years ago. So I see Eleanor's back. She's going to rescue me from my babbling and uh, see if we can unmute her. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he was noisier after he got the treat. <laughs> yeah, she she was. Oh, she, there's. Yeah, I, I have a neighbor that likes to terrorize her. Um, but um. Yeah, so what we were, we were talking about were the classes that I took. And then um, 2009, um, I found, I saw there was an event coming to Vegas, and I really wanted to go to this event. And um, so I reached out to this guy's support desk, and I told him, look, by spending more money, my husband's going to kill me. But this event that you're having is right here in my town, and, you know, la da 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 So... Jason Flatland, that was the first time I ever met him, and he allowed me to come. I worked the event a little bit to, you know, help them with registration and stuff like that, and it was amazing. It was great. I got to, it was, a, it was a, <laughs> sorry. You know what? Uh, hold on. I'm going to let her out again. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. I just want to let you know that uh, that that might bother you as a listener or as a viewer, or you might love it. Um, I'm I, I have five dogs in my house, so it's most likely going to happen too. Uh, I brought this little guy with me. I was having internet trouble. I'm not even at my own house. I'm not in my. Uh, but I guess it's a party wherever I go. That's what we say because I have um, I have four kids. So somebody invites us over, and it we're literally you know you're inviting a party over to your house. <laughs> so, uh, so Eleanor, uh, don't worry at all about the dog barking. Uh, I love it. Some of my favorite mentors. It's, it's so funny because I'll go through their training classes and I'll hear the dog uh, bark. I, I remember one, um, Jeff Herring, he was, he, he was doing what, and he was talking about what he had just said. It was so funny. I can't remember, but it was almost like a sexual connotation and the dog like barked right at the right moment that it was just, it was just a hoot. So um, I like that you're keeping it real and, and other people will have babies climbing on their lap while they're teaching stuff, but who cares? You know, we, that's exactly what we're doing. We are, um, we're a show from home. I didn't ask you to come down to my studio. It's not my goal to have a studio. Um, 
and and it's not even my goal. I had employees. I had 15 employees when I ran a childcare center. Uh, and yes, I do look much younger than I am, but uh, I I have no intent of, of hiring others. However, I do want to help people make more money and I want people to have their own business. And I think the backbone of of our America is really rests on the shoulders of small business owners. And so some of the things like you, you said your husband did not want you to do uh, multi-level marketing, but many people do make a great in income through multi-level marketing. It's not for me either. I, I um, kind of had an issue with that. I was kind of good at recruiting for Avon, but I never was good at selling the stuff. I don't know what my problem was, um, but that was a really good slow one to get into. So it doesn't matter what you choose to do. I just really, and, and I guess I'm starting to, I should probably put the camera on me. I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that some people just don't want to be an entrepreneur. I don't know how to relate to that, but I don't judge people for it. I just don't want you to give up on the thought if you think that it takes too much money, if it takes too much time, if it's not realistic, that's bullshit, that's wrong. If you really... I kind of maybe understand if you just want to show up somewhere, do what you do best and go home and not have anything else to do with it because uh, you love to snowboard and you know how to make a million dollars in somebody else's house or however amount. I'm, I'm starting to come to terms with that. But if that's you, then you don't need to watch us anymore. Uh, send us off to your brother-in-law because that's that's really not what the show is about. And and God bless you. And and um, please shop at at stores that are owned by individuals and not corporations because um, we're really what makes America cool. So enough on that. What where were you? <laughs> where were you? Okay. What do I get to give myself? On that is that um, what you think? In, uh, in regards to uh, direct sales, the only thing I will say about the direct sales, my, my journey in direct sales, um, I was a tastefully simple consultant, among other things, but tastefully simple was the one that I was most successful in and I had been building a team. Um, but the thing with direct sales is they tell you you own a business, yet you really are just a subcontractor. You sign a contract with them to sell their products. You sign a contract that tells you what you're going to get paid commissions from them based on your sales. You pay for a website. You have to follow their rules on how you promote the website. You don't own it. You are a subcontractor. At any point in time, they reserve the right to terminate you as a consultant. Okay. Uh, you know, and I'll and I'll I'll give you that, and um, the same goes for any franchise, though, right? So right, anything, anything, okay. So, so when you go to McDonald's. This is really important to mention too, because when you go to McDonald's, uh, you really are supporting a local businessman because they're a franchise and they're owned by franchise. But franchises awesome. aren't for everyone, and those kind of things. Go ahead, go ahead, interrupt me. It's cool. What McDonald's poison, poison, poison. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I get that it's not for you, but for some people, that's what they want. You know, I was in a childcare center the other day, um, and and I was looking around and I thought, you know, why would somebody buy, why would somebody put in half a million dollars or one point five million dollars to build a childcare center when you can do it yourself? But I looked around and I was like, they had systems in place. They had um, it was very. It was very turnkey. So um, not for me because I'm a from scratch kind of gal. But for some, that's that's what they want. And for others, you know, when want to be hands off, it's for them too. So let's not knock everybody. <laughs> well, no, I, I actually I did not know where that I was going with that. I totally did. Um, <laughs> what happened with my specific circumstance with that direct sales company is they changed their – compensation plan mm -hmm. and when they changed their compensation plan what happened was it made the uplines greedy because now the upline could get rid of the middle person which was me mm -hmm. kick that person out and then 
take everybody that they had brought in and those people would move up, increasing their profits. So the whole point of me sharing that story was with what we do now, I own my domain. I pay for my hosting. Nobody can kick me out of EleanorPrior.com. Nobody can kick me out of my own business. And I have multiple streams of income. I'm not just depending on a commission or, or the mercy of some woman to allow me to come into her home and have a food tasting party. That I am not at anybody's excellent. mercy. I don't know. Can you find the clap machine? Because I can't find the clap machine. You know, um, let's see. I should know where this all is. Fireworks and clap machines. It's awesome. But you know what? It's not just MLM. Okay. She's bringing up stuff. Oh, look at that. Is it effects? No, that's the party hats. Is that where the claps are too? Um, I don't know. No, I should know this. Zane taught me well and I, uh, I'm like not being good right now. <laughs> anyway, um, and again, we could go into a whole other show about this, but it's really important to know. You know what, Eleanor, go grab a spoon real quick. I'll tell you why later. Go grab a spoon. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's like, okay. All right. So uh, what I just want to say is that everything that she just said is true about owning your own website. Okay. Yes, Facebook is hot. Yes, you can make a lot of money just having your own stuff on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever, but own your own stuff and own your own email list, okay? Everybody's going to tell you, oh, you could do it with no list. You could do it with this. We could do it with that. But Eleanor and I will tell you that the most money is made with the relationships that you build and you build no better relationship than with your own email list. So enough said. Um, Eleanor, cover me for a second because I need to take off and get a spoon. Okay, well, while she goes get the spoon, I'll go on my little tangent. <laughs> um, in addition to that, what she said about the social media sites, technically you're only a tenant because just because you have a profile there. So just think of it kind of like you're leasing um, or renting from a landlord. And then earlier she mentioned, or I also said I like multiple streams. So affiliate marketing is not the only thing I do. Um, I also sell on Amazon. Now Amazon is a different playground. Um, I do retail arbitrage. And so you have to play by Amazon's rules, just like you would with any other type of business that's allowing you to sell on their platform. I like selling on Amazon because I like going out and shopping. It gets me out and about around town and um, interacting with people. Um, and out from behind the computer, but yep. So that's that. And I'm really curious about this whole spoon thing. It's very interesting. <laughs> All right. Way <laughs> this is, this is like crazy. Cause I, I mentioned I had internet trouble before. So, um, it, poor Eleanor had to wait half an hour and I'm at my father-in-law's house and the guy does not have a real spoon in this house anywhere. Like he has two forks, four knives, and and um, I found a plastic one. <laughs> okay, well, and 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 Brenda told me to make sure I had my wine, so now I have a spoon and wine. <laughs> That's so you can sip it, smell. No, all right. So um, there is a, a thing about coming on to uh, this show is that you have to be ready to play a party game. So. Oh, she's like, she got it. So I've never tried this with a plastic spoon and I did not practice no, it. No, I, I did not get it. What are you, what are you having me do? All right. Did you ever do a science class? You have to balance the spoon, the, the no, the spoon on your nose. No. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Ready? Whoever can keep it on the longest wins. All right. Put it on your nose and let go in a second. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, first of all, I can't even let it go. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Lost this. Maybe lost. I should and talk. mine is still balancing, of course. Of course, yours is still balancing. Let's see how yeah, she's I'm doing it. Come on, come on. Give it a real shot. Breathe on it first. I am trying. You have a flat you nose. Do. Okay. Oh, there you go. Goodness. See, I have a Greek nose. So that, well, that's. I have a Blaxican nose. So what do I, what, what can I tell you about that? <laughs> 
I don't know. Mine's just huge. It gets in everybody's business, I'm told. But <laughs> now, come on, you have to talk. I feel ridiculous. <laughs> How many times did I get it on? <laughs> I so oh, wish. <laughs> I so so wish that we had uh, that I knew how to do the applause app, but none of my apps were working today, and that's okay because that's kind of how life rolls, right? We're just gonna. I thought it was. I thought it was in the effect. Maybe it is. Let's see. Oh, there it is. One. Woohoo. Okay, so it's in effect. Right. Yeah, I guess I can go a taste. <laughs> All right, I'm throwing up the showcase now because um Eleanor has um let's see, show item, show item. If you want to find out more about Eleanor, you can go to eleanorprior.com and uh she's got a really cool thing on there to help you get started with what Pinterest and Oh, yeah, my, my Austin. Um, my Austin offer actually came from a virtual event that I held, and I took the um, five best sessions, my five favorite sessions, and I combined them into that offer. So there's um, Pinterest is 